First command, now we're going to get into this. First command is to obey the gospel. Romans 10, 16. It keeps getting slipped around. Romans 10, verse 16. This is where we're going to read. Okay, we can read fifth. No, let's just read 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? You read this whole chapter, it talks about how they're preaching the gospel. How... Verse 14 says, How then shall we call on him whom we have not believed? And how shall they believe on him whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that, are, that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings to good things. Remember the part of the armor of God? The, the shoes are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Okay. But they've not all obeyed the gospel. What's going on here? A soldier, when your first command is at salvation, okay, there's an army being put together. We need soldiers. You want to be a soldier for Jesus Christ? You belong to him. He's going to command you. He's going to tell you what to do, and you're going to do it. Who wants to be a soldier? Most people say, no, I love my life. I love living however I want to live. Right? No. You throw that old man at the foot of the cross, God gives you a new life, new man, new creature in Christ Jesus, and now you're a soldier for Jesus Christ. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible is taught repentance, repent, repent, and they like to take repentance out. Godly sorrow. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation. It's what makes repentance work. And that repentance starts at salvation. Starts before salvation, before God saves you. Being a soldier starts at salvation. Picking up your cross daily starts at salvation. Trusting God starts at salvation. But before salvation, it's repentance. You rep uh, repentance towards God. I say, for godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrows of the world worketh death. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 talks about believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Okay, how that he died, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. Death, burial, and resurrection. How he died, he bled to death. The blood was shed to pay for my sins. You confess both in prayer. For with the mouth, I say, for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You do it because you show that you're not ashamed. And then you ask God to save you. That's people who say, how can they call on him who they haven't believed? When did the calling start? At the very end, when you ask God to save you. Call means ask. Don't let anybody tell you differently. The Old Testament, you go through and do a word study on call. It means ask. You're asking God to save you. Does that come before belief or after belief? It comes after belief. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, first, 1 Corinthians 15, uh, verse 2 talks about how you can believe in vain. That belief is in vain. You skipped repentance. You don't call. You don't confess both in prayer. That belief is in vain. We talked about that. The no change life gospel is the no resurrection gospel. And that's what they mean by uh, you're not believing in, you're believing in vain. Okay? But the first command you're given as a soldier, brother and sister Christ, is to obey the gospel. 1 Thessalonians 2, chapter 2, verse 13. For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. Remember it says, Who hath believed our report? When we read that, that they not of all... Of Romans 10, 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? We read it there. This is the word of God, God's perfect written word. And it effectually works in those that believe. 
Can you, you know the way to tell the difference between someone who believes in, in this book and who doesn't believe in this book? Look at the life they're living. It effectually worketh, not just words, worketh the life that they're living. It's going to show whether they believe in this book. And we're supposed to treat this book as if it's the Word of God, and it is. It's not just the words of men. I've had people attack the King James Bible being God's perfect written word. Okay? It's our final authority. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Remember what we read, not to be repented of. When I was quoted about the sorrows of the world, not to be repented of. We faint not. We don't ever repent of repenting. You never repent about obeying the true gospel, the plan of salvation. You have someone say, well, I was saved that way, but now it's only belief, it's only belief. They never truly repented. Why? Because you never repent of repenting. <laughs> okay, it says here, we faint not. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, the ministry of reconciliation, preaching the plan of salvation, telling people they need to obey the gospel to be saved. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. A lot of people are doing that today. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. I always tell you, brothers and sisters of Christ, turn here, turn here. Get a King James Bible. This is the, my final authority. And if it's your final authority, you can hold me accountable to this. I can hold you accountable to God's Word. But, but with these other people that attack this ministry, attack Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries, they're the final authority, okay? It says, but by, but by manifest of the truth, commending ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. They have, their conscience is seared with a hot iron, the Bible talks about. Why? Because they're handling the Word of God deceitfully. It's not about the Word of God. It's not, thus saith the Lord. It's, thus saith my preferences. Brothers and sisters in Christ, when we got saved and became soldiers for Jesus Christ, it became, thus saith the Lord. What does our Lord Commander say? I mean, in America, it's like Commander-in-Chief. But what's our Commander say? Thus saith the Lord. Not, thus saith my preferences. Okay? But we can hold each other, sharp, as iron sharpens iron, the Bible talks about. We teach each other the Word of God. We correct each other through the Word of God. We encourage each other through the Word of God. That's how it works. Every man's conscience in the sight of God. Verse 3, But if the gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. We always say, but if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. But who's hiding it from them? The God of this world. The God of this world, you go ahead and read the whole story again about the uh, parable of the sower. Okay? The, the lowercase g God of this world is going to do everything he can to prevent people from getting saved. And the number one way, because if people were getting saved left and right, people were getting saved left and right in the past. There was a big explosion. People were getting saved. So how do I prevent people from getting saved? This is Satan. How, do we, how does he prevent people from getting saved? Well, what if I came up with a system where I could offer them the flesh, their sins, they can keep their sins, and still be a Christian? In other words, get them to believe that they're saved when they're as lost as a paper plate in a snowstorm. And that's exactly what he did. Okay. And whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not. They don't want to follow God's plan of salvation. Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. Through faith. It takes faith to do all those. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. People like to try to replace the word faith with the word trust. Because I always tell people, I have a Webster's 1828 dictionary, but I don't always go off of it because it's made by the world. Okay, the Webster's 1828 dictionary, I think someone showed me, it said that under faith it tried to add a definition of trust under the word faith. 
Faith has nothing to do with trust. It's hope. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you're repenting and believing in the finished work of Jesus Christ, you're hoping with all your heart that God will save you. A God that you can't see. At salvation, when God saves you, that's when trust comes in. That's when your life of trusting Jesus Christ comes in. I always say that, Lord, I trust you. Now that I'm saved, whatever's going on in this world, Lord, I trust you. You know what you're doing. Okay? John 3.19 says, And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Satan offers them, you can keep the flesh. That, that, that pesky armor of God and being a soldier for Jesus Christ, nah, you, really, you really don't want to be that. Yeah. And people buy it. People want it. They want to be able to, they want to keep their sin. They still want to be a drunkard. They want to be a drug addict. They want to be a fornicator, an adulterer. They want to party hardy. Uh, movies, TV shows, video games, cussing, whatever. I mean, all these sins that are out there. All right. The ways of the world is always about the flesh. It's about sin. Just indulging in sin, lasciviousness. The Bible talks about people who are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. That's what Satan offers them. You can be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God and call yourself a Christian. We promise them liberty, being liberated from the law of sin and death. That's what the New Testament Christianity liberty is. The New Testament liberty for a Christian, if I can say it right, is you're being freed from the law of sin and death. They promise them liberty, yet they themselves are the servants of corruption. They're really off offering them corruption, not liberty. Okay. 2 Thessalonians 1.8. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 1.8. It says, in flaming fire, in flaming fire, I'll say it again, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's, notice how those two things go hand in hand. If they don't obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, they don't know God. All these people out there, oh, you don't have to have repentance. You don't have to ask God to save you. They're mocking asking God to save you calling upon the name of the Lord. They mock it. They don't know God. It goes hand in hand. If they don't obey the gospel, they don't know God. That's why it says here, Know not God, and that obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Everlasting destruction. You're being destroyed for all eternity. You're burning for all eternity. You never burn up. It's everlasting destruction. It means you're being destroyed constantly all the time for all eternity, but you never get destroyed completely. Okay. Verse 10. When he shall come to be glorified in his saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. We already talked about this. All right. Who hath believed our report? Romans 10, 16, where it talks about they had not obeyed the gospel. Who hath believed our report? Here's my testimony. I've given my testimony on how I was saved. Born again. The old man is dead and buried with Jesus Christ. I came to the cross, foot of the cross, in a repentant state. Broken. I believed, I finally could understand, fully understand what Jesus did for me on the cross and believe in my heart the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross that was God manifest in the flesh and it was His blood that was shed on the cross. He paid the price for my sins. That's my testimony. And afterwards, I confess both in prayer. I ask God to save me. He came into my life. He gave me a new life. He's changed my life. That's my testimony. The changed life gospel. Who hath believed our report? Because our testimony among you was believed 
in that day. All right? Our testament, I'm using that for today, you know, that, that day is talking about uh, when we get to heaven, we're going to know who was saved and who wasn't. All right? And if I was ever wrong, I'd rather err on the side of caution and preach the gospel to someone I think is lost, and we both wind up in heaven, and we're sitting there, I was wrong, praise the Lord I was wrong, glad you're here than to say, well, I didn't say nothing, and I was right, and that person winds up in hell. Well, I could have witnessed to him, testified to him, preached the plan of salvation, pushed, you know, that obeying the gospel. Okay. Titus 1.16 reads, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny Him. Being abominable and disobedient unto every good work, reprobate. Remember what we read up there? Unprofitable and vain. Reprobates. Worthless. The works that they do are worthless. They're going about to establish their own righteousness, trying to get their good works to outweigh their bad works, thinking they can stand before Jesus Christ and get into heaven that way. All these people are like that. It's easy to believe them. Even they are like that. Oh, no, we're not. Yeah, you are. You're all about keeping your sin and living the world's way and living the world's way. And when you get up there at the great white throne, there is no denying that you're a sinner. There is no denying Jesus, the real Jesus Christ, the real gospel. And at that point, the people are going to be just falling down on their knees and trying to say, but, but I did these good things over these bad things. I did these good things. I'm still a good person. And they're still going to try to push the good person thing. Okay? It's worthless. They do not want to obey the Jesus that is the Lord and King, nor the plan of salvation that He gives, so they make up their own Jesus and own plans of salvation. We're going to get into this. They make up their own Jesus and their own plan of salvation. They want to make the commands. They want to be the ones making the commands, basically. They don't want Jesus commanding them. They want to be the ones making the commands. So they come out with this own Jesus that's like a puppet, they put their hand into and start talking for them, and they give their own commands and what they want. That's exactly what's going on, brothers and sisters of Christ. The uh, Bible says you can be as gods knowing good and evil in Genesis 3 5. That's what it's all about. Ye can be as gods. And the Jesus that's mainly preached, that's mainstream today, is an easy believism, love gospel that you can continue in your sin. God's okay with sin. Jesus is okay with sin. Sin's not that big of a deal. And he's okay with you conforming to the world and being a friend of the world and not abstaining from the all appearance of evil. He's okay with drunkenness. He's okay with fornication. He's okay, and on and on and on and on. Yeah, you probably shouldn't do that, but God's okay with you because God loves you. Present tense. What's going on? This easy believism. They're creating another Jesus. A false commander when they're the ones that are really the commander. They're commanding themselves and telling themselves what they want to hear. 2 Corinthians 11.4 says, For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him. Who's the him there? Well, if you read verse 1 through 3, it talks about how Satan beguiled Eve. The he there is Satan. Hell was created for the devil and his angels. You're going to wind up bearing with him. Brothers and sisters of Christ, we obey the real Jesus Christ of Scripture that he gives the commands, not us. He gives the commands, and we do our best to follow him. We're soldiers for Jesus Christ. What's the first command that we had to follow? Obey the gospel. Soldiers wanted. Who's coming? We need soldiers. Who's coming? Who's going to come sign up? I signed up. Did you sign up, brother and sister in Christ? I pray the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. um, First Peter. What was it? Make sure I, I didn't skip anything. Oh yeah, here it is. Um, real quick, go and make a Christianity of your own. I got finished watching Brother Brian's uh, Bible version issue exposed videos, and, he, and I'm right now getting through his emergent church movement. If you want to go through some of that, the emergent church movement 
And what it is, is she's sitting there and she says, go and make a Christianity of your own. And that's what's popular today. It's all about making a Christianity of your own. Creating your own Jesus, which is always going to be Satan every time. And you become about feelings and opinions, and you're the commander-in-chief. You get to give the commands. You follow your own commands, basically. And you think you're deceiving God. And you think you're deceiving the brethren. Well, the brethren can see through you only because God sees through you. Through His perfect written word. Mm -hmm. They create a plan of salvation where they do not have to have a changed life. That's what it's all about, brothers and sisters of Christ. Ultimately, that's what it's about. People who don't want to obey the plan of salvation, obey the gospel, is because they don't want that changed life. They love their sin. They want to keep their sin. And that's that thing that's so appealing to people. Go and make a Christianity of your own. They're basically saying, go make a Christ of your own that you want to follow. Make up your own God. And ultimately, that God is you, but the deception is you're really worshiping Satan. You can't serve two masters, but there's only two masters. There's either Jesus Christ or there's Satan. Which one are you going to follow? Well, I'm not going to follow either. Then you're following Satan because that's exactly what he wants. He doesn't want you following Jesus Christ if you're lost. But it's just Christ. We've been there. A lot of us have. I have testimonies. I was a false convert for most of my life. I made the commands in my life. I decided what was okay and what wasn't okay. I did what I wanted when I wanted. I was serving Satan. 1 Peter 4.17 For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? Well, we read what the end of them would be. Everlasting destruction, fire, flaming fire, hell, and then the lake of fire. That's the end of them that obey not the gospel. Okay. It's something to keep pushing this, brother and sister Christ. That's why we, we go out there and we're part of the ministry of reconciliation. We start obeying the, body, uh, obeying the gospel right before God saved us and we asked God to save us, we obeyed the gospel. And from that point on, we're obeying the gospel. The changed life is evidence that you're obeying the gospel. Fruits meet for repentance. That you're in Christ Jesus our Lord. We are created in Christ Jesus our Lord into good works. Okay? The first command is to obey the gospel. When I joined the military, I, I was in the military. When I joined the military, there was no change. When I got there, I could eat whatever I want. I could sleep in all I wanted, and I could do whatever I wanted. I, I, I went to the theaters, I went to the movies, I went out to eat. You know, I just was just doing whatever I wanted. Now, how many of you out there, brothers and sisters of Christ, that are ex-military are looking at me going, Yeah, right. When I got to basic training, it was, you get up when we tell you to get up, you fold and you make your bed the way we tell you to make your bed, you fold your clothes the way we tell you to fold your clothes, you eat what we tell you to eat, you do what we tell you to do, every second of every day. Basic training. There was a changed life when I joined the military. My life wasn't the same anymore. It's the same way when you get saved and become a soldier for Jesus Christ. Your life changes. It's not the same anymore. You get told what to do and what not to do. Okay? God commands you. Now, there's no... When I joined the military, it was a changed life. No more... I... It was no more, I can do whatever I want. I can do whatever I want. People... Why don't you come to the cross and get saved? You can no longer do what you want. God is the commander and he tells you what to do. Now, who wants to get saved? Who wants to be a soldier for Jesus Christ? A lot of people are like, what? You mean I can't do whatever I want? And they say no. And they go this way. Then they come across someone that says, you know those people over there? Ignore those people over there. The changed life, being a soldier for Jesus Christ, just ignore those people over there. Uh, you can be a soldier. You can be a soldier here and just do whatever you want, live however you want. 
you don't have to really listen to the Word of God. It's just, it's basically there for guidelines. And I can promise you liberty to be a soldier for Jesus Christ and go to heaven and promise them liberty. But they themselves are the servants of corruption. They let them be corrupted and continue in corruption. The old man is still alive. The old woman is still alive. It's one of those things where you cannot be, brother, sister, Christ, you and I know this, you cannot be a soldier for Jesus Christ and disobey, I'll repeat it again, disobey the gospel. You can't. What happens to those who disobey the gospel? They go to hell. To burn for all eternity. The Bible talks about how death and hell is cast in the lake of fire. When you have liberty in Christ Jesus, you're freed from the law of sin and death. I'm still held to the law of sin today. I'm still in this body of flesh. I'm still a sinner. But I'm a saved sinner. But the term death gets dropped out of the Bible. But you, you find it again in Revelation where it says, When death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. And those who were not found written in the book of life were cast in the lake of fire. But death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. They promised them liberty. You're still under death the law of sin and death, and you wind up in hell to burn for all eternity. Okay? That's the first and most important command, your first command as a soldier for Jesus Christ, is to obey the gospel. That's your first command. And that's the first thing that we look for in the brethren. Did you obey the gospel? Repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And after God saves you, not before, after God saves you, you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. You are a new man, new woman. You have a changed life. You now have a commander that tells you what to do, and you do it. And your heart's desire is to do it. People don't want to obey that. And you look at these people's lives that profess to be Christians. I, I told this, over half the world believes in a Jesus Christ. Over half the world's population believes, and this was, I think it was back in 2017, but this ecumenical movement of trying to get everybody to unite, and we're all one, and there's a Jesus in your religion, there's a Jesus in your religion, there's a Jesus, you know, there's a Mary in your religion, <laughs> you know, they're false Mary, which is really, um, gosh, my brain froze on that one. You have... Tamutz was the, was the one, but there's three of them, I can't think of them, but the three, the true trinity, you know, the three false gods. But Tamutz is one, and then you have Isis, but that's not the original name, but maybe it'll come back to me later. But you all have, these all have these Jesuses, and the whole world, over half the population of the world, back in the 2017 or 2014 when the census was done, and maybe it was even before that, but it was just like, yeah. They're not the Jesus of the Bible. They're Satan. That's who they're following. So the first command, obey the gospel. What's the second command? The second command I do twofold, because it really is. It, gave, it gives new meaning to when I say take up your cross daily. What he's, what's God really saying? Turn to Ephesians 6.10. Ephesians 6.10. time because there's a glare on it I can see it Ephesians 6:10 yeah. it says finally my brethren be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might put on the whole armor of God. I've already said this before, but I'll say it again. It says, whole armor of God. If you just have the sword and no shield, remember what the Bible says? It effectually worketh also in you that believe. If you don't have the shield of faith, the sword isn't going to do squat. Every piece is connected. The breastplate of righteousness we're going to read about. The helmet of salvation. The shod, uh, feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. It all is connected. It says put on the whole armor of God. Not just the ones you want to pick and choose. I've known people, going off on a side talent, that you call them out on their sin, 
the fact that there's no changed life saying, you know, what's going on here? And they'll come back with, at least I preach the gospel. They don't have the sword and they don't use the sword. They don't have the shield of faith. They don't have the chest piece of righteousness. They don't have the helmet of salvation. But they're supposedly shotting their feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. At least I preach the gospel. At least I hand out gospel tracts. What does that have to do with justifying sin? I've had people do that to me. You put on the whole armor of God. Why? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The devil is always trying to entangle you. We read about this. The hardship of the world. He'll make life even harder purposely trying to trip you up and mess you up. God will allow it sometimes. Okay? Entangle you. We talked about this. Okay? That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devils. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and have done all to stand. The only way we're able to stand is because we're putting on the whole armor of God. What happens when you take off a piece of the armor of God? You fall flat on your face. You have to have the whole armor of God on. Luke 9.23 says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny himself. You take up that cross daily to remind you, the old man is dead and buried. Denying yourself. Denying your flesh. You take up that cross daily and you follow Jesus Christ. You're obeying his commands. Picking up your cross daily is a day-to-day -day thing. Putting on the whole armor of God is a day-to-day -day thing. It's not, oh, I got saved, therefore I'm automatically wearing it all the time, and I'm good to go. No. you got to make sure you're putting on that whole armor of God every morning. That's why one of the things I always tell people, start your morning with just, it takes a few seconds to open up the Bible and read a chapter. Read a verse. I mean, seconds to read a verse. But take a few minutes to read a, a chapter every morning and a chapter every evening before you go to bed. When you become a soldier for Jesus Christ at the foot of the cross, when God saves you, your heart's in the right place. He says, okay, now you're a soldier. You're one of mine. Okay, you belong to me. When you put on the whole armor of God every day, because it's a day-by-day -day thing, I love that old hymn, day by day. It was a day by day and with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here, and so on and so forth. It's a great old hymn, but it's a day by day. That was one of the first hymns I ever mem memorized. Because that's what I had to learn. It's a day to day thing. Picking up your crosses daily, putting on the whole armor of God is a day to day thing. It's something you've got to focus on every day. Day. Okay. You are now someone that God can command. Okay, When you put on the whole armor of God, now you're someone that God can command. Someone said once that God will not save anyone he cannot command. That's what the Bible actually teaches. If a man love me, he will keep my words. You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. Okay. If he can't command you, you're not one of His. It's that simple. Jeremiah 7.23 says, But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. Obey my voice. Obey the word of God. Obey my commands. And I will be your God. It goes hand in hand. And ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Will God save anybody he cannot command? No. Someone comes, refuses to repent, they love the old person, they love that old man, old woman, and they claim that I got saved. God did not save them. 
He will not save anybody he cannot command. What's the first command that we talked about? Obey the gospel. Okay? Let's continue in Ephesians 6.14. I just wanted to make that very clear. It says, put on the whole armor of God, and God will not save anybody he cannot command. And when you get saved, and you put, start picking up your cross every day, denying yourself, picking up your cross daily, and following Jesus Christ, obeying his commands, you're putting on the whole armor of God every day, now you're somebody he can command. He saves you. Okay? At salvation, he knows the heart. He checks the heart. I'm not saying you have to clean up your life before you get saved. That is guaranteed to happen after salvation. Guaranteed, because you are now a soldier that takes commands. Why, does, why can't people get this? They love their sin. The old woman, the old man is still alive and kicking. Ephesians 6.14, let's talk about the armor of God. Let's just go through it briefly. And then we'll go through it in a separate series of talking about them individually. Ephesians 6.14 Stand therefore. Stand, stand, stand therefore. Having, remember we said it before, maybe old to, to, uh, was it verse 13. Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and have done all to stand. Then it says, stand therefore. Okay? If you're wearing the whole armor of God, you're denying yourself and picking up your cross daily, and you're doing your best to obey God's commands, follow Jesus, you're going to stand there for. Why? Because you're standing there for having your loins girt about with truth. People always say it's a belt, it's a belt. We're going to find out. It's not a belt. Girt is an action. It's something you do to get ready for work or war. The two W's. Work or war. You can even say labor. Okay, LW, <laughs> labor and war. Okay, training and war. Okay, girt is an action. So you girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. God's righteousness is imputed to you. And Jesus Christ, the hidden man of the heart, that says for the ladies, but God is in all of us, he shines through us. You have the breastplate of righteousness on. God's righteous, Jesus' righteousness is imputed to us. And the world sees it by the life that you're living. You're done, you can stand. Stand there for. Verse 15. And your feet are shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We're all part of the ministry of reconciliation. We've obeyed the gospel. Now we're preaching that other people obey the gospel. The plan of salvation. You can be the friend of God. You don't have to be the enemy of God. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. 17, and take the helmet of salvation. Bible, when we get into that, we're going to talk about that. That helmet of salvation, people think, well, it means that you're saved. Eternal security. You could, but I believe when I'm looking into it, it's talking about salvation in this life. You put on the helmet of salvation. The two biggest vulnerable parts a body has, because I'm learning how to hunt, okay? Uh, the headshots are the biggest things that they want. When you're going after deer, you're going after bear, uh, and you're hunting, you want a headshot because you want the meat. You don't want to ruin the meat with the bullet. But the point is, is you take it down in one shot also. The reason you have that helmet on in this life, the Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. To save sinners. I'm talking about salvation in this life. You put on the helmet of salvation. Are you obeying God? Okay. And some, when we get into them, some armor, when you had a helmet, it showed a sign of rank. You got up in rank. Okay. Helmet of salvation. But it's mainly there to protect you. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit. This right here. The Word of God. Oh, there is no perfect written Word of God today. That person is not, a, is not saved. They're not a soldier for Jesus Christ. They can't be. Because it says, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You're supposed to have that Word of God on you. Perfect written Word of God. 
If you don't have it today, then why give us the command to if we don't have it today? Whole nother argument. But 18, here's the big thing. You put on the whole armor of God. Remember it said, above all, the shield of faith. It takes faith in all these things. It takes, like I said, all these pieces of armor are intricate. They go hand in hand. It requires putting on the whole armor of God. But once you put on the whole armor of God, look what the Bible says here. Verse 18, praying always. What does the Bible say? That you're supposed to pray without ceasing? You're to give God thanks in all things. You give God glory in all things. You seek wisdom from the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, open this book to me. Tell me what I need to do, what, I not, what I'm not supposed to be doing. Clean up my life. You know, you pray for protection. You pray for victory. <laughs> Lord, give me victory over that sin that I'm struggling with. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Capital S, Spirit. Remember what we read in Romans 8. He that hath not the Spirit, he's not of his, none of his. You have carnally minded walking after the flesh versus spiritually minded walking after the Spirit. You're a soldier for Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit comes in and relays what Jesus is saying, his commands, what he hears, therefore that he speaks, the Bible talks about. The Holy Spirit comes in, it's Jesus Christ in you, speaking, saying, hey, do this, don't do that. You pray supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance. You say, we've got this armor of God on. We're denying ourselves and picking up our cross daily. What are we, what's, what's going on now? You're watching where to with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Watching. What are we watching for? Uh, we're watching for the catching away of the, Bible, of, of the body of Christ. We're keeping our eyes on Jesus Christ. We're looking for that blessed hope. We're doing the work of the Lord because Jesus could come back any day now. We want rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. We want to go up there to hear Jesus say, Well done, thou good and faithful one. We don't want him looking at us going, You just barely made it. Man, you just, so you disappointed me so much. Yeah, you're saved. My blood washed your sins away, but boy, you disappointed me so much. Is that what you want to hear Jesus say? We keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, that blessed hope, and have the understanding that Jesus could come back today. I need to get busy for the Lord. I need to make sure my life, I'm living for the Lord. I'm obeying the Lord. Okay. Watching thereto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly. That's what a lot of us pray when it comes to going out there and preaching the gospel. It, sometimes it can get um, intimidating. Okay, We always pray that the Lord gives us Helps us open our mouth boldly. It's not just, Paul's not just, he's saying it for himself, but I'm saying this for myself as well. Hopefully, brother Jesus Christ, you're saying this for yourself. To make known the mystery of the gospel. Remember what the Bible says, if the gospel be hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And who's hiding it from those people? Satan. We're going out wearing the full armor of God, doing battle with Satan by trying to uh, make known the mystery of the gospel, the plan of salvation. Satan's trying to hide it from people's eyes, and we're trying to show it to them. There's a fight going on. Okay? Verse 20, For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. We're supposed to speak boldly. That comes with time. It's not easy. This doesn't come when you first get saved. You don't know much. Okay? You, the first thing you knew was, I have to obey the gospel. The plan of salvation. God saved me. Okay, now I know I've got to get the Bible. i got to start reading the Bible. 2 Timothy 2.15, I've got to start studying the Bible. i got to start applying this to God's words, His commands, to my life. And you go from there. And as time goes by, you become more bold because God has cleaned your life up a lot. He's shown you a lot in His Word. There's been a change. The Holy Spirit's in there. You start having confidence. Mm -hmm. If I could sum up the day-to-day -day life of a Christian, it would be Ephesians 6.11 and Luke 9.23. Luke 9, okay? Take up your cross, or deny yourself, take up your cross daily, and follow Jesus Christ. Put on the whole armor of God. 
that's the day-to-day -day life of a Christian. I don't normally do this, but hopefully I'm getting some amens. That You look at it and go, yeah, it's like every day is a war sometimes. I'm either having to do a lot of work for the Lord, I'm struggling, struggling with the flesh, warring with the flesh, I'm struggling and warring with the lost world, and sometimes I'm having problems with brethren, saved. You know, sometimes you can have problems with some of the brethren, okay, that you're working on. Okay. I can just sum it up. That's the day-to-day -day life of a Christian. Putting on the whole armor of God. I read my Bible every morning, read my Bible every night before bed. Okay. I study the Bible. I live the Bible. I go through my life saying, Lord, what else do I need to give up? Is there anything else that I need to give up? Is there something I'm, I'm supposed to be doing that I'm not doing? Mm -hmm. If you had to wear a bulky set of armor every day, we're talking about physically, it would remind you who you belong to and who you serve, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it remind you, Brother Jesus Christ, if you had to put, when I was in the military, I had a mil I was in the Air Force, I had an Air Force dress uniform and I had BDUs. And when you put that on, you knew who you belonged to. You knew who you served, you knew who you belonged to. It was a reminder all the time. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we don't have a physical suit to put on. Okay? It's all spiritual when we get into talking about it. But we need to stay focused on it. If you were wearing a full suit, an actual suit, and had to walk around in an actual suit of, well, I say a suit, but if you actually, when we look into it, putting on the helmet, okay, girding up your loins, putting on the chest piece, shotting your feet with the preparation of peace. You know, you got the sword you put in here. You, you carry your shield. You can put it on your back and you pull it out when you're ready to defend yourself. All right? If you had to carry that around every morning you put it on and you had to carry all that with you throughout the day, it would be a big reminder of who you are, was it who you belong to and who you serve, who commands you. Oh yeah. All right? So we went over all that real quick just to say, hey, those are the, all the pieces of the armor of God. We will get into them piece by piece, and they all, like I said, they connect with one another. That's why it says put on the whole armor of God. You can't leave one of them out. You leave out the helmet, you get headshot. You take off the breastplate of righteousness, you get shot in the heart. You can say a heart shot. But you can get taken down. You don't have that shield to help block. That's your main and first defense is that shield of faith. You don't let him go, go ahead and try to hit my breastplate. Go ahead and hit my helmet. No, you have that, that shield out first. That's your first line of defense is that faith. And then you've got the sword. All right. They all go hand in hand. So, brothers and sisters of Christ, when someone says that Jesus is the capital L Lord, He's my Lord and my Savior. It says that nobody can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. Uh, are they put on the whole armor of God? Are they a soldier for Jesus Christ? Okay. If, you are, if Jesus Christ is your Lord and your King, capital K King, capital L Lord, then you are a soldier for Jesus Christ. Now, are we always... We're almost done. Are we working or doing battle at all times? In these last days, brothers and sisters Christ, it feels like it. That we're doing battle all the time. But if you want to turn to 1 Kings 19.3, you guys remember Elijah? He was doing battle all the time. He was out in the wilderness running for his life. Okay? But there came a time where even he had to take a break. And God gave him time to rest. Not... We have the right to have fun and entertainment. I'm talking about there's times where God's going to give you peace and joy. I sat out on the deck and talked with them at the end of the day, get to watch the sun go down, and I could eat dinner out there during the summers and spring and fall. I'll eat my breakfast, lunch, and dinner outside if it's not raining. But 1 Kings 9.3 it says, And when he saw that he arose, when, when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. This is Elijah when um, Jezebel threatened his life. 
and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servants there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough. It was so bad he was wanting death. Just, I want to die. How many of us keep saying, Lord, come get me. I'm just tired of this world. I'm tired of the struggles with my flesh. I'm tired of the struggles with these false converts online trying to come over and try to mess people up on my channel. I'm tired. Lord, I just want to come home. Lord, call me home. We're all wanting Lord to call us home. How many of us have been there? I've been there lots of times. Now, now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and crews of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again to the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat. Why? Because the journey is too hard for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God. There's times in our lives, brothers and sisters Christ, where the Lord will say, Okay, everything else pushed to the side. It's just you and me time. Just sit here. Go ahead and eat. You know, go ahead and drink. Sit here and relax. Go ahead and take naps. Go ahead and rest for a little bit. He'll give us peace and joy throughout our life as a Christian. We're going to have struggles. And there's going to be days that we're going to be like, Lord, take me home. And there's going to be some days where we're doing work for the Lord, saying, Praise you, Lord. This is amazing what you're showing me. And you're getting so excited. You're not having that, Lord, take me home. You're having that, Lord, I'm doing your work. We're soldiers for Jesus Christ. We're li I'm living for you. You've given me joy. I got to walk on the beach today. Um, I overdid it. You know? And then I ended up having to lay down and, and take a couple hour nap. But I walked on the beach, talked with the Lord and everything. Okay, There's times where we're going to have to rest. I always try to put it out, like when I say put on the whole armor of God. Now, we're putting on the whole armor of God, but just as an analogy, when you go to sleep at night, I didn't go to sleep in my BDUs. There were some times that you did for certain reasons, but for the most part, you take your armor off when you're in your tent, and you go to sleep that night. You get to rest. You get to eat, rest, relax. You get up the next morning, you put that armor back on, you pick up that cross, and you get back to following Jesus Christ. Every morning you're putting that armor back on. Every night you're getting to rest. I'm not saying you take it off, but you understand the, the analogy, hopefully. There's times where you get to rest, and God knows when things get too heavy for you. God said that um, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them that are called according to His promise, or His purpose. And there's just times where things might get too tough and God's like, stop, just stop, take a break, relax, okay. take a breather. Uh, Matthew 11, 28 says, come unto me all ye that, are lab that labor and are heavy laden. Remember what, the Bible, what we talked about, uh, endure hardness as a good soldier? All those are labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Understand, taking the yoke upon us, we become soldiers for Jesus Christ. When you get saved, you belong to Jesus Christ. But we see there that God knows there's going to be times that we're, he we're burdened and heavy laden. We're laboring and heavy laden. We just go to Jesus Christ. Right. He'll give us peace. He'll give us joy. There are going to be times, I want to throw that in there, that God's going to say, take a break. Relax. Oh Lord, I've just been studying the Bible for three hours, and, and there's still some more studying I need to, and God's going to say, relax. Let's go for a walk. He does this to me all the time. Let's go for a walk. Hey, let's go sit outside. Let's, do, let's sing some hymns, but let's go sit outside and relax. Well, look at the time. You haven't eaten breakfast, you haven't eaten lunch, and now it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Go get something to eat. Relax. Okay. There's times where God's going to do that. Okay. Now, like I said, this is a long study, so I pray that I'll try to see about breaking it up if it's way too long. But if not, then I pray, brother, that you, that you love the Word of God like I do. You can just watch it in parts and then 
keep up. But we've got two more sections here and then we're done. i got an encouragement I want to encourage you guys with and then I want to talk real quick, just barely touching on it, but the people faking, picking up their cross daily and putting on the whole armor of God. We already mentioned it a little bit. You look at them and go, wait a minute, that armor doesn't match the armor in the Bible. All these different armies around the world. Nowadays it's kind of hard because we're all wearing BDUs and, and whatnot. But the way they wear their hats, some of them, and, and this and that. But in the past, when it was armor, when they put on armor, you could tell the difference between an Englishman wearing armor and the Spanish wearing armor. Okay? There was different aspects to the armor that made it look different. You could tell who was on whose side. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 12. Turn to 2 Corinthians 11, 12. You have people today that love to fake it. They like to say, I'm wearing the whole armor of God. I'm just like you. I'm one of you. And they're not. Eleven verse twelve. But what I do that I will do that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory they may be found even as we. They're putting on a show. They're trying to act like Christians. But their glory isn't to God, it's to the flesh. The glory in the flesh. Okay? But you see that, wherein they glory, that they may be found even as we. 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. You judge them according to their works. They're going to try to counterfeit the armor of God. They're going to try to counterfeit, I'm picking up my cross daily and everything. But you look at the life they're living. Is there a changed life? Has God come into their life? He's their commander. He's their chief. He tells them what to do and they obey Him. They do their best to obey Him. Is there a changed life? No, there's no changed life there. Then they're counterfeit. They're fakes. They're frauds. James 1, 2, 2 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I had to throw that in there. You have a lot of them say, Well, I read the Bible. You need to uh, be doers of the word and not hearers only. When I'm preaching to you, brothers and sisters of Christ, it's just not about you listening to a good sermon. Oh, it's a good sermon. Yay, okay, I'm done. Now I'm going to go do this and that. Are you applying it to your life? Are you being doers of the word? You see these people here, they're not. False apostles. I know it's talking about apostles. When it says the false apostles, but it goes and talks about that Satan's ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. They like to copycat us and try to look like us. Okay. They've even copycatted our, God's Word. I don't have a Bible perversion that looks like this. I mean, this is the Illuminati Bible. It's an old Bible, so you can easily tell the difference. But I mean, they're black. They try to look the same. I mean, this one's even got... They tried to put the rings on it, but... When you look at it, there's actually eight to nine rings on this book. When this is seven seal book, seven rings. But I'm just saying the black, they try to comp, uh, counterfeit the word of God. Be careful. There's people out there that are going to be faking it. And they're going to try to sneak and wither their way in. And they're, oh, I just want to fellowship, guys. And the next thing you know, they're going to mess you up. All those things we talked about. You're going to be worn and being entangled yourself with all that stuff about backbiting. They're going to start debating. They're going to start getting you to question things. They're going to try to pull you away from the Word of God. They're going to try to get you to put the sword down. And once you put the sword down, then they can start getting you to take off other pieces of the armor. Okay? Acts 20, 28, we read about this. It says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers, to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Why are we supposed to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood? Why am I feeding you, teaching you, showing you things in Scripture? Verse 29. 
For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise. Of your own selves, people are going to sneak in and act like they're one of you. Counterfeit. Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. I've seen this with Brother Brian. I've seen at King James Video Ministries, there was people that were supporting Robert Breaker and they were supporting Brother Brian. Okay? One woman, I'll call her out by name, Deborah Gill. I used to pray with for her. We would trade out verses and we would fellowship, but she was a counterfeit. I was a, a babe in Christ at the time. And she would always be on Brian's channel and saying amen to repentance towards God, faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. She'd be over there saying amen to the plan of salvation. Then you find out she's over on Robert Breaker's channel and Robert Breaker's saying it's only believe. There is no prayer. There is no rep real repentance, the biblical repentance. She's over there telling him amen on that gospel. You've got the right gospel. That's the only gospel and any other gospel is, is false. She was trying to serve two masters. And what happened was, is when it got called out on her, boy, did she ever get called out. But the thing is, is while she was there at Brian's channel, she kept trying to push people to Robert Breaker. You need to go check out Robert Breaker. You need to go check out Robert Breaker. What's going on there? To draw away disciples after them. She was a snake that snuck in trying to be pretend. I'm a Bible-believing, God-fearing woman. And she snuck in there to make friends and everything, and oh, look at me. And then when the time comes, those that she was able to deceive, like whisper words of deception, to sow dissension in the ranks, as they say in the military, you, there's people that get arrested for sowing dissension among the ranks. Yeah, that's what happened. you got to be careful. Okay? Try them by the Word of God. Not by what my feelings and opinions are or what I say. You try them by the Word of God. Make sure you have that whole armor of God on. Verse 31, Therefore watch. Remember what we read, be sober. Uh, we didn't read it, but the Bible talks about being sober, be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant. 1 Peter 5, 8. Therefore watch. When you go and you go to put on your armor and you're supposed to stand watch somewhere, do you show up drunk? Do you show up high? No, you show up with the full set of armor on, ready to stand your post and defend that post. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. That's my post, brother, says Christ. I'm standing firm, warning you night and day with tears that there are wolves among us. Okay? There are people, uh, also of your own self shall men arise. There are false converts around us among us. And you need to start judging people according to this book. You need to start judging me according to this book. Okay. Nine days with tears. And perils among false brethren, 2 Corinthians 11, 26 that we read about. A false witness that speaketh lies, soweth discord among brethren. Proverbs 6, 19. Why is that? They come in there to try to destroy us. You can infiltrate someone and they try to destroy you from the inside out. They can't get in from the outside, so they just wiggle their way in. I mean, they just can't barge in looking lost, acting lost, talking lost. There's no way we're going to let them in. They've got to sneak their way in. But what's the whole point of the false witness, a false witness that speaketh lies, so a discord among brethren? About having false brethren. About Paul warning us night and day with tears about wolves in sheep's clothing. Turn to John 10, 12. John 10, 12. If you read before, it talks about, I am the good shepherd, verse 11. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. And it talks about how the sheep know his voice. But look at verse 12. But he that is a hireling, and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming, and leaveth the sheep, 
and fleeth, and the wolf scattereth them, and sc scattereth the sheep. I'm sorry, the wolf catcheth them, and scattereth the sheep. What's the whole point? When they come in trying to wear fake armor, be counterfeit, it's all about scattering the sheep. Destroying the body of Christ. Be very careful. Sometimes you can have someone that is just lost that can come in and mess the body of Christ up. It's not because we always say the wolves should shoot clothing. Well, I do believe, like I said, with the, Dibber, the lady, lady Deborah Gill, she was a snake. I do believe she was a wolf in sheep's clothing. But there's sometimes you can have people that are just flat out lost. And if you're fellowshipping with the lost world and you're inviting the lost world into your fellowship, uh, they can really mess you up. Okay? You're supposed to have that armor of God on. You're supposed to be, you're not to have any fellowship with light. How, light's not supposed to have any fellowship with dark. Okay? 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion hath light with darkness? I just wanted to throw that in there, brothers. Sometimes we always say they're all wolves, they're not all wolves in sheep's clothing. Some of them are just flat out lost. They like the idea of being part of a club, and they see these Bible-believing, God-fearing uh, men and women, and they think this is a different religion, and they just want to be part of a club, and they, they don't want to really get saved. Like I said, those people that get in here going, this is going to be great, yeah, and they get in here and go, wait a minute, this isn't what I signed up for, and it isn't, because they've never truly repented. The old man is not, or the old woman is not crucified with Christ. We tell them, hey, you're not supposed to do that. We start judging them, and they start getting upset. What are you doing judging me? But they can come in and mess you up also. Be sober, be vigilant. When you put on that whole armor of God and you deny yourself and you're picking up that cross daily and following Jesus Christ, obeying His commands, one of the commands is you're not supposed to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. Okay. Now I'm going to end this with encouragement, brothers and sisters of Christ. Those of us, I've been saved for four years, been in ministry uh, off and on for three years. Um, There's a couple times I had to take a break from ministry. Um, I feel like I'm 80 years old sometimes. I mean, I just feel like I, I've been in this battle and I've been in this war forever. And it's only been a few years. I, I tip my hat to people like Brother Brian, King James Video Ministries, uh, Cannibal KJV. He's been saved uh, for, I think, 10 or 11 years uh, when I talked with him. Um, and Brian's been saved for long, uh, that long, if not longer, but he's been in ministry for over 10 years. And how it just feels like we've, it's been an eternity. You know, we just, we've been doing this fighting. We've been putting on this armor. And I just want to do a little encouragement for you, brothers and sisters of Christ. Okay? Those that are newly saved, don't get discouraged by, by all that we've been talking about. You'll get to where we are. But those of us who have been saved for a while, um, it just seems like we've been in the trenches for, for forever. It just seems like it. That's why a lot of us elderly Christians, the elders... We're really desperate to go, Lord, is it time yet? Is it time yet? Lord, please come get us. We have those days more often than not. Uh, but 2 Kings 6.15. I'm going to go ahead and keep the Bible here and try to get through this real quick so we can end this study. But encouragement. 2 Kings 6.15. It when you feel like you're the only soldier out there, you're the only one. In these last days, we're so spread thin, and there's times where I feel like I'm the only one out here in this area, but you're the only one, and the enemy surrounding you, and uh, Brother Brian said it's called a rear guard action. He used that term, and, it's, and he didn't make up the term, but he was the guy that I give people credit where the first time I heard it from. Rear guard action where the enemy's surrounding us, and people are starting to get scared. Remember for 2 Kings 6.15. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a a host compassed the city both with horses and chariots. And the servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? We're surrounded by the enemy. And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. 
Let that be an encouragement, brothers and sisters of Christ. Anytime you think you're alone, you're not alone. You're never alone. Jesus is with you. Okay? His army that the world can't see is there. Okay? 1 John 4.4 4. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Another sign of someone who's lost, false convert. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. There's two he's. What are they? He that is in you, Jesus Christ. Then he that is in the world, Satan. Remember when people preach the uh, false gospel, another gospel, another Jesus, receiving another spirit? You may wear it well, bear with him. Where's the he of this world going to go? He that is in the world. He's going to hell. The lake of fire to burn for all eternity. Okay. Matthew 10, 28. And fear not them which kill the body, but are, able, are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Brothers and sisters in Christ, okay, our fear is of the Lord. He's the one that we fear. We're not to fear this world. They can come into this place. They can, try to, they can arrest me if God allows it. They still need God's permission to do any of it. They can come in here. They can arrest me and they can take me to prison. And they can torture me. They can get to the point where they kill me physically. I will not be afraid. Why? Because my soul belongs to Jesus Christ. They can't get my soul. They can't destroy my soul. My soul belongs to the creator of the universe. I am sealed into the day of redemption. Okay. Lord, that's got to be encouragement, brothers and sisters in Christ, that your soul belongs to Jesus Christ. You're his. You belong to him. He owns you, but you belong to him. No man will take them out of my hand. No man will take them out of my Father's hand. Okay? So, brothers and sisters of Christ, be encouraged. You're not alone in this day-to-day -day fight and the day-to-day -day struggle. But remember, for the Lord, for Jesus to be your capital Lord and capital K King, you've got to be a soldier for Jesus Christ. You've got to put on the whole armor of God. You've got to endure hardness as a good soldier and not be entangled with the affairs of this life. Okay? you got to be sober, you got to be vigilant to keep your eyes open for the fakes and frauds out there to guard yourself and protect yourself. Okay? So I'll end this with grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, thank you for watching and remember, we're soldiers for Jesus Christ and we've done all to stand. Don't faint, don't falter, keep your eyes on Jesus Christ our Commander, our Lord our King, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the Jesus Christ who is come in the flesh. I'll see you in the next video.